All right, let's try my better tattooing again. Let's do some more coil machine science and talk about our A bar gap. Okay, now that's over with the armature bar gap. This is the gap between the top of our coils. Boop, boop, boop. And the bottom up where our A bar rests. Now, a lot of people fight tooth and nail about what the proper distancing is for all this stuff, but realistically, it's gonna be just based on whoever built your machine. Those geometries are gonna be different, right? The larger the gap, the wider it is the less actual influence that the electromagnetic field generated by those coils is going to have because the further away from them that you get the less likely it is to be able to pull right so increasing the gap is going to if we increase it it's going to make it slower it's going to make it slower it's going to require more energy to actually fire to pull those things down because you're going to have to increase the amount of magnetic field that's being uh, generated, I can't multitask, um, to actually interact with that, that's, that, that ferrous material inside of the A-bar. And um, it's, it, when it has to travel further, that means it's also going to increase the amount of time that it's going to take it to get back up, right? Which is going to put more stress on the rear spring. So, Usually there's going to be, you know, a, a decent amount of distance. We usually like the nickels stacked or if you have a dime or whatever it is. I don't know. Nowadays how people set up their machines, I think they're all kind of set up the exact same. But the larger that gap, usually you're going to have to increase it for larger groupings, right? Which is going to need to be run slower because you need a lot more power, right, to pull those things in. But there should always be just, there should just be only a little bit. So you don't want to be able to stick like a tube tip. You know, and I mean like the back end of a tube tip all the way through there and be like, oh, this has just got so much motion. It's going to be awesome because the machine's going to go so slow. It's almost like doing freaking tatal, you know, instead of actually like high speed tatal like these coil machines normally do. Anyways, um, when we start shrinking up this gap, just to get back on track here, when we start shrinking it up, we're going to make it way faster. Right? Because the amount of space between there is decreased, that range of motion is going to be decreased as well. So it'll, it'll speed up and make it go faster. You're also going to require less energy uh, to operate it because that magnetic field that's being created from our operation inside of these coils is, is going to have greater influence because the product that it's actually trying to interact with is closer, right? And on average, because we're not going to be having uh, such a drastic amount of movement, we're going to be decreasing the amount of stress that we're going to be seeing on the rear spring, depending on the material that your machine is made out of, right? So, when you're setting up your stuff, depending on how you want your machine to run, a color packer versus liner, black and gray shader, etc., etc., paying attention to how big that gap is can actually influence how the machine is working. Now, it's within reason. If your coil gap, and we usually do it by the front, um, which is weird because there's two different heights on average to the actual coils. One is usually on the back is actually a little bit higher, right? Because there's a static point setting this up on the rear post where this part of the A-bar doesn't actually travel that far, but the front one does. It flexes a whole bunch, right? So to increase that field effect, usually we'll bring it up just a little bit by shimming it with some really thin washers to make sure that when this edge comes into contact with that edge of said coil <laughs> that this part of it is actually getting really close to it as well and if you can time it perfectly depending on what your gap is like if you can have that thing hit almost flush straight across there oh boy the sound is amazing anyways that's a bar gap cool right use it to tune your stuff make sure you pay attention to how far everything is oh and for the love of god make sure that the actual a bar is, is going past both of the contact tops of, of your coils. It, it's nothing more infuriating to me than going to a convention somewhere and I see someone whose A-bar is like there. It's not even coming into contact with the magnetic like center core of this, this coil. So literally it's just running on a single coil, but there's two inside the chamber, which is just, just don't. Make sure that that is, is set correctly and uh, Oh, happy tattooing. That'll be it. 
Sorry for Better Tattooing, signing off.